Good morning, everyone. I'm Kush, a platform engineer at DevRev. And we are thrilled to be here at Istio Day. And today, we are not just going to talk about the challenges she had with Istio, but we hope that we may experience it together. So before we start, by a show of hands, can I know how many of you had faced challenges while scaling or configuring Istio into your organization? Nice. And how many of you had triumphs with Istio, which may uh, in, in the sense that Istio made your performance better or it made your platform more reliant or more robust? Oh, quite a few. <laughs> so we hope that uh, we may be able to address few of the challenges which you might have faced. And we hope that the number of hands in the NIST Istio day may increase where Istio had improved your performance or reliance of your platform. So buckle up everyone because we are going to embark on a journey of DevRev tinkering with Istio, exploring its vast capabilities, understanding the hurdles, and celebrating the victories. So today I have with me Kushbu, who is infrastructure and security engineer at DevRev. So over to you. Hey everyone. So a little bit about DevRev. Can you hear me, right? It's on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, at DevRev, we're creating world's most uh, customer centric companies by bringing customers' voice to software development. You can head out to our website using the QR code here and uh, to know more and try it out for yourself. So, as any other modern SaaS company at DevRev, we use microservices and we use Kubernetes to deploy them. And there are just so many ways of doing this to call any one way a right way or you know a wrong way or the best way. So, we're going to take you through a journey on how we began and what our network infrastructure looked like, and then how it looks today after we've adapted Istio. So this is a very high-level architecture, how things looked pre-Istio. So we used external load balancers for handling our external traffic as well as internal traffic as well. And within the cluster, we leveraged Kubernetes native objects, ingresses, service pods, everything to manage our traffic. And uh, we had one ingress per namespace, which was essentially for one microservice. So this kept one service owner to be in total control of their namespace and ingresses and everything. You might notice that how communication between different services is also happening externally to the load balancer and not talking to service directly. So there were a couple of reasons for doing so. One such reason was service discovery. So service discovery is native to Kubernetes. However, after a certain scale, it's not as reliable. So we chose to use, it, use the ALB. And uh, the other reason is lack of load balancing options you get just with service. You can just do a round robin, but that's not enough. And so we chose to do a ALB, uh, use an external ALB. The third reason was to have a little bit more insights to how our network is behaving and what kind of traffic is flowing through it, which was absent uh, without an ingress on an ALB. So now this is how it looks today. So a very first observation one might have is that instead of having ingresses per namespace, we just have one, which is taking care of all external traffic that's flowing in the cluster. That ingress is the Istio ingress gateway that we have. It sits in the Istio system namespace separately and handles all the traffic. For service-specific traffic, however, we use combination of virtual services and destination rules to do traffic manipulations and traffic management you know, targeted for those namespaces. So we're going to talk more about this as we go. So first thing first, why did we even do that? Why did we even choose to go this route? And why chose a service mesh? So service mesh enables you to have a uniform way to connect, secure, and manage your microservices. It enhances communications, gives you more control on the cluster. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can read NIST guidelines. They say that for running any Kubernetes cluster, using service mesh is the way to run them efficiently and securely. So service mesh aka Istio for the context of this talk. Uh, we're going to talk about certain capabilities. So observability, Istio generates detailed telemetry by default, gives you more insights into how your service are communicating to each other, and then enables you to debug issues faster. Traffic management. So like I said, it's very limited when you use only native Kubernetes objects about what you can, you can do for, with traffic management. You have to rely on external load balancers and gateways for that. With Istio, you get a wide range of all traffic management options. You can choose from load balancing options. You can do things like circuit breaking, rate limiting, tune your timeouts, and also um, you know, do things like deployment techniques, blue, blue, green, canary, and whatnot. So that gives an edge, right? 
um, security, very important. So with Istio, it has automatic MTLS automation, as we know. It uh, lets you control access and uh, enforce policies based on service identities, thus making your intra-cluster communication secure as well. Service discovery, we mentioned it uh, briefly. So service mesh is native to Kubernetes, yes, but service, sorry, service discovery. But service mesh can just add to it and do a whole, whole lot more and help you run these very complex intra-cluster communications more predictably. So with all these advanced features, you naturally, your services becomes more resilient to failures and everybody wins. So we will cover how we achieved all of this at DevRev, how we leverage Istio to do all of this and talk about challenges we faced, give you, uh, you know, solutions, the best possible are the solutions that we followed to fix them. So I guess we can all agree that it's not realistic enough to cover each and every Istio challenge configuration and scaling stuff in just 25 minutes. So what we have done over here is we have distributed our slides presentation into high level network extraction which Istio provides you with its CRDs and feature capabilities. So before we start diving into whatever network capabilities Istio provides, let's just look into how we handled Istio installation and Istio upgrades. So to kickstart our journey with Istio, we created an in-house chart which was a combination of community charts and custom ingress controllers and Istio gateways resources, which provided us in a fixed flexibility and high handled us and helped us to cater our use cases. Coming on to how we handle the upgrades, so when it comes to upgrading Istio, we adopted Kendry upgrade approach. This method not only allows uh, allowed us to take care of breaking changes, but also helped us to allow gradually roll out the gradually roll out few services to the new control plane, making sure that there is no incompatible or breaking changes in the configuration which we currently use. However, our journey hasn't been without challenges because the heavy reliance of Kenry upgrades onto Istio CTL and Kenry presented few hurdles in our GitOps workflow. We are heavy users of Argo CD and Argo workflow and our complete CI CD is driven via GitOps. The imperative nature of Istio CTL command was somewhat at odds with this approach. So whenever we had to perform the upgrades, we had to disable the application from Argo. We had to do manual magic by upgrading and then re-enable the application. Apart from the GitOps, we also had to deal with stale versions of the control plane being referred in the Envoy proxies. And they were not getting in sync unless and until there is a rollout happening for that particular service. To again overcome this challenge, we had streamlined the approach and we had an automated script which used to take care of data plane restarts. So that script used to monitor if there's any control plane upgrade and it would trigger a data plane rollout whenever deemed necessary. So this actually helped us to automate our process to a certain scale and made it more efficient. So now let's look, let's take a look into gateway and ingresses and let's take a look at what were the major triumphs which we were able to make with the gateway and ingress feature capability of Istio. So first time which we made was that migration to edge gateway. So our migration to Edge Gateway via the sidecar or the Envoy proxy for each service was a significant shift in our architecture. This not only eliminated a single point of failure, which was a old central gateway, but it also enabled us to leverage Edge features of Envoy, like <laughs> gRPC load balancing, circuit breakers, uh, dynamic service discovery, state rollouts, traffic splitting. And these features not only scaled and improved the performance of our platform, but also it increased the resilience and robustness of the platform. Second, let's take a look at how we achieved JSON to gRPC transcoding and how we made it magical. So an essential part of our architecture is the communication between internal services, which is primarily handled via gRPC. So to facilitate this, we needed effective JSON to gRPC transcoding. And before introduction to Istio, our old central gateway was taking care of this. And service owners had to maintain API schema and API mappings at both places because they need to make sure that the client is able to handle JSON to gRPC. So Envoy natively supports this transcoding using Envoy filters and protobuf stubs. And these, how we did this was, and how you can do is this, you can mount the stubs into your sidecar Envoy port, which can enable seamlessly converting the JSON request from a client to gRPC server. Now there were a lot of manual process involved in this, and we took help of CI and our Bazel build system to orchestrate this and make this process magical for developers so that they don't even know that how the things were happening. So how we did this was that, Bazel was responsible for generating the protobuf stubs. And then CI was responsible for mounting those stubs into our main pod directory. And then we used SEO's sidecar annotations to actually tell that you can 
mount this proto directory into the Envoy sidecar, and we had a general Envoy filter templated into our Helm chart, which would take care or which would find the protobuf stubs into the proto directory. Now let's take a look at the major challenges which we faced while scaling with gateway and ingresses. <coughs> so first major challenge we faced was that we were facing a lot of Fixes errors. And out of the Fixes, majorly were 502 and 503s, which was upstream connection reset. After debugging and digging down more into this, we realized that it was always happening during rescaling of Istio ingress gateway. And we came down that it was due to the Envoy, which has the termination date duration default to five seconds. So to mitigate this, we set our termination rain duration to 300 seconds, which allowed enough time for all the requests to terminate gracefully and not getting any connection or not getting any request terminated abruptly, which was in the queue. Although this is a deprecated approach now, because as of Istio version 1.13, there's a new Envoy feature capability, which is terminate when active connection is zero, and we are yet to migrate to that, which, uh, which we've seen can be more reliable. Second was that we used to experience occasional 504 errors from our ALB. And after digging more into this, we found out that this was only happening for APIs which were actually taking more than the ALB timeout. So we had few APIs which used to take five to 10 minutes during some export, during some imports and more. And the solution for this was that SEO ingress should be sending keep alive props to NLB so that it can make sure that the connection is not yet terminated. But after digging more into this, we didn't find any native approach in SEO, which is why we had to rely on our Envoy filter which would take care of sending the escape alive props to the ingress gateway. Right. Let's talk about how we made traffic management more controllable and granular using Istio. So Istio's offerings let you do deployment techniques like Canary Blue Green, where you can have more informed upgrades. You are sure that your upgrades are not faulty and that they are successfully able to serve the traffic. So that is done. All that magic is done by using Istio virtual services as well as destination rules. And another very interesting and useful feature that we leverage at DevRev is using Envoy filters. So Envoy filters is a very powerful cap capability uh, that is offered that we can leverage using Istio itself. And so we at DevRev use combinations of WASM as well as Lua Envoy filters. And these filters run on different parameters, including but not limited to gRPC context, HTTP headers and paths, and also JWT metadata. So these came very handy for specific use cases for some services where they wanted to manipulate some traffic. So one such use case, for example, was during end-to-end -end testing. We wanted some of our end-to-end -end testing traffic only to land at some dummy server for the sake of the test and not actually call our main service. And these Envoy filters just work like a charm for such use cases. So as always, there are challenges when you try to do you know, good things. So, so the, I'm going to talk about a few challenges we had when we implemented these traffic management features. So a very interesting thing happened when we started using Istio was our WebSocket connection started closing abnormally. We received a lot of 1006 status code, whereas the expected status code is 1000 when your connection closes just normally. And also, interestingly, it was only happening with Chrome client and not all of the browsers. So we turned to community and dig deeper and f figured out that this happens because of this very specific setting called delayed close timeout, which is set to one second by default, and which is what causes these close abnormal connections. So to fix it, you, we had to use an Envoy filter and set this setting to zero and then have graceful terminations. However, now with the latest releases, there's a new way to deal with this problem. You don't have to use the Envoy filter. You can use uh, Istio setting itself, a pilot flag. And uh, I mean, that's very way easier to uh, configure this. So other issues we had was with the you know, blue-green and canary. So during a particular testing with the blue-green deployment for one service, we were trying to mirror traffic to see how our new deployments are working, where we learned that the mirroring is actually not happening as expected. So we started debugging, and we learned that our internal service-to-service -service communications are actually not honoring our virtual services. So it's bypassing virtual services. And the reason behind that was our virtual service was only tagged to our own gateway, the DevRev gateway that we deployed for handling external traffic, but not the default Istio gateway called Mesh Gateway. So for this to work, for your service-to-service -service comms to honor your virtual service configurations, you have to tag the default gateway called Mesh to your virtual service. 
And another thing happened during canary upgrades was we, we noticed that our Istio D pods were started consuming a lot of memory and CPU on our nodes, and it was not normal or not what we had seen in the past. So it turns out that was also an issue with this flag called distribution tracking, which is set to true by default, and which is what the, was the culprit for this high resource consumption. So setting it to false you know, uh, handles that problem. You can head to these issues to know more about uh, what, what this flag is used for. Let's talk about how we made our in clusters and intra-cluster communications more secure with Istio. So Kush mentioned how we moved from a dedicated one gateway to cent decentralize edge gateways per service and offload a lot of operations to those on ways instead of our gateway service having to do it. And one such operation was GWT validation. So with Envoy proxies, you just need to create a request authentication resource and, and hook your issuer with that. And then all GWT validation tasks can be taken care of by the Envoy itself. You don't need a dedicated service to do it for you. And uh, then that MTLS, so like I said, Istio offers MTLS by default. So whenever you install Istio, it's, it's always enabled, but it's set to permissive mode, which essentially lets your own way accept MTLS or non-MTLS traffic, uh, which works, which does not interrupt anything much. But when you move to strict mode, which makes sure that you only accept, your own ways only accept MTLS traffic and not anything else, one need to be very careful about making sure that you create service entries for any external endpoints. So if your services are expected to talk to anything outside of your cluster which Istio does not recognize or know about, make sure you create those service entries at the host and the port numbers which you want your services to talk to. You can also restrict that to namespaces. If you want only certain namespaces to be able to talk to these external endpoints and not others, you can do that as well with Istio. So that's, that's just authenticated you know, inter-service communications. Now, you can also do authorization. You can allow or disallow certain services to be able to talk to each other. Uh, a very strict way of doing it is just have a deny all traffic policy and authorization policy, which says you can only talk to services within your namespace and rest everything you're not supposed to do. And over that, then you can create explicit allow lists and allow services which are by you know, business logic are expected to talk to each other. Whatever Envoy filters and whatever templates and manifests and CI magic Bazel system we were talking about, we will be sharing a GitHub repo where you can find all the samples and all the manifests. So now let's take a look at how Istio helped, at, helped us with application monitoring. So we can divide the observability part for application into two major milestones. First is the traffic monitoring, second is monitoring the application itself. So Istio provides comprehensive traffic monitoring capabilities which can help you capture inbound and outbound traffic, giving you a complete picture of how your services are interacting and how data is flowing throughout the system. And if any issue arises, you can rely on tools like Kiali, Udit, Anomalies, understand the flow of requests, and understand complex service interactions. So we at DevRev were uh, heavily using Kafka consumers and asynchronous workers. And it's very heavy and it's very costly to actually implement tracing for Kafka consumers and asynchronous workers. So <laughs> to actually visualize the network traffic for all of them, we relied on Kiali because Kiali or Istio does not need any instrumentation on your application level. And if your service is onboarded to the mesh, it can provide you with default matrix like what's your error rate, what's your latency, and from where your traffic is flowing. So this actually helped us to debug a lot of network issues and a lot of flows issue with our Kafka consumers. And we were able to know that where anomalous traffic is coming from and why is the service is degraded or why this latency, this endpoint is being throttled. Next thing is Istio can also provide you powerful application monitoring and debugging features. One of the major one is tracing and APM, which can allow you to track individual requests as they flow through various services. So with, so with, with sidecar context propagation feature, you can actually track the full path of requests even in a complex microservice architecture. So how we did this at DevRev was that we utilized share piece of code for GRPC and HTTP server initialization, which take care of context propagation from the sidecar trace IDs, ensuring context consistent and accurate tracing throughout the system. And at the last, we enabled a config flag, which is proxy merge, which actually helped us reduce the load on Prometheus systems. So if you don't have proxy merge enabled, then you have to configure two scraping targets for Prometheus. One for your sidecar container, second for your main application container. With this proxy merge, the sidecar will take care of scraping the uh, the main application matrix and merging with the sidecar matrix itself. So you would have just a single target to scrape. One of the key aspects of maintaining 
healthy Istio is monitoring the Istio control plane itself. And Istio D exposes a lot of matrix which you can monitor to make sure that Istio is behaving properly. We are just going to walk you through some of the key matrix which actually helped us few of the which actually helped us debug few of the production incidents. So first, by keeping the track of sidecar injection failures, we can actually check and identify any issue which can impact service to service communication or which may cause an incident in your system. Another important metric which we tracked was success or failures of configuration pushes from Envoy, from STO to Envoy, which actually helped us to ensure that each and every data plane proxy is running the correct configuration is in sync with the latest control plane version. And at the last, we monitored the D resources. So as Kushbu mentioned during our candy rollouts, we saw a lot of increase in memory and CPU consumption, which actually can tell you that if there is any memory or CPU leak, or if there is any configuration change which you have made, which you shouldn't, or if there's something wrong with your STOD. At the last, Istio comes with a lot of default alert rules, which are actually used by Istio Performance Suite. These rules can provide a good starting point for monitoring the performance and health of your service mesh. However, we think that every organization environment is unique and you might need to customize those rules. So the good thing is that the way those performance alert rules for alert manager are implemented are customizable according to whatever you need or however you want to. And at the last, it's important to remember that effective monitoring is just all about having right data at the right time. And by monitoring the control plane and customizing the alert rules, you can actually make sure that you have a healthy service mesh and everything is working well. Now let's take a brief look around what were the challenges which we faced while implementing monitoring and observability with Istio? So as we scaled our services, we encountered a challenge where enormous volume of matrix showed the Prometheus setup. This was due to the high cardinality matrix, which increased the load on our monitoring system. And that's when we realized our single Prometheus setup was not enough to work well. To address this, we did several optimization, one of which was to disable host side of fallback, which helped us reduce the number of unique matrix series, elevating load on Prometheus. But again, this worked to a certain extent, which we decided to use a federated Prometheus setup. And this federation allows us to split our matrix load into multiple Prometheuses, as well as we also drop short lived matrix from our federated Prometheus to global Prometheus. And this again reduced the load, but again, it was not efficient enough because we needed long term retention for our matrix too. So, to again, at the last, we had to rely on Thanos for having horizontally scalable Prometheus and then using S3 for long term retention, which actually helped us to overcome the load and to also have matrix stored for compliance purposes. Right, so we tried to cover as much as we could, you know, during this short window of 20, 25 minutes. So a little bit about what's next for us at DevRev with our journey with Istio. So we at DevRev are all expanding to different regions now in terms of hosting the platform so that we can cater to our customers' needs of data residency and availability. So for that, we evaluated multi-cluster Istio deployments uh, and different deployment models that it has to offer, uh, single versus multiple control planes, single versus different networks, and then you know how you, if you need or do not need a cross-network gateway to manage traffic between these clusters, and also internal versus external you know, CA authorities to manage MTLS in those clusters. So as the next step, uh, we are going to share our findings and our learnings through that journey as well. So you all can scan the QR code below to access the GitHub repository, which, is, which has manifests of all the implementations we spoke about during this talk. And we'll also be sharing these multi-cluster uh, findings through the same repository. Also, like Kush shared initially, that we face issues with our upgrades and that they're not as smooth as we would want it to be. So we're writing our own custom operator to take care of those problems, have automatic canary, make sure that the data plane uh, is upgraded to the same version as control plane, and also be more GitOps friendly. So I hope that, uh, thank you all for being here. I hope we uh, prepared you a little bit better in your journey with Istio and also give you a heads up about a few bumps that you might run into. So thank you everybody for being here. Please, we request you to uh, give feedback. You're scanning the QR code here about the talk, what you liked, what you did not, so we can make ourselves better. And uh, I don't know if we still have time, but uh, if we do, we can take a few questions. <laughs>